Donna Landis Smith from the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation. I am here today to announce the 2024 Farm Family of the Year to be recognized at the Queen Anne's County Fair on Wednesday, August the 14th. I would like to graciously introduce and congratulate Henry and Beth Covington. Hello, congratulations. Thank you. It's a wonderful um, recognition to be nominated and chosen as the 2024 Farm Family of the Year by a board of your peers. So the local Ag Advisory Board nominated and chose you and voted to have you recognized at the fair. So congratulations for that. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's quite an honor um, to be recognized by your uh, fellow farmers. Yeah, so which is great. Let's go back a little ways and let's talk about some of the history that you um, have here in Queen Anne's County as farmers and community service. I know you've done quite a bit of both. Um, Henry, let's start with you. Okay. So when you grew up, did you grow up in Queen Anne's County? Were you born here and was your family from here? Yeah, our family's been here over, what? Since the uh, 1740s. 1740s. Maybe. Wow. Yep. So you do have a very long history. In Queen Anne's County. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I grew up. I've always been in Queen Anne's County, never left. So. Yeah. so did your family always farm? I know your father farmed. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, my great-great-grandfather was named Henry Covington. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have a middle name. I have not. I don't have a middle name either. But anyway, um, he was a, pre a Methodist preacher. He had three churches, uh, Burrsville, Star, and uh, Salem, which is close to Churchill. Okay. And he actually owned a farm. And he, and he had I don't know, seven or eight kids or something. He owned a farm. It was Sherman Baynard's farm where the grain bins are. Oh yeah, out of 309. And my grandfather was the, I guess the youngest, or he was the last one to get married. Okay. So all the others got married and left. And he was still on the farm. He got married, I think he was 34, 35 years old. And he and my grandmother, she was younger, but they, uh, they went to the city of Philadelphia to work. So the, the, the preacher who owned the farm uh, he had the kids do all the work, and it didn't take him long. That he's it, is the one, the last one to leave. He was like, "Well, this isn't going to work." So he he sold the farm, right? And so then, like maybe six or a year, oops, we don't know how, but it wasn't too much longer that my grandfather came back and says, you know, I don't like the city, I want to farm. Well, bingo, the farm had already been gone. Uh, so he was a tenant farmer the rest of his life. Yeah. And uh, he had, they had uh, nine kids and... Um, Which your dad is one of. Of the nine, yeah, dad was one. And of the nine, dad was the only one that really uh, pursued farming. Um, I had an aunt on Canal and her name was uh, Peggy, she married a farmer on Ken Allen named Buck Tolson, so they still actively farmed. Right. Um, so Dad, he um, he always wanted to farm. He artificially bred cows for a while, still trying to get an opportunity to farm. And it, for one reason or another, it never happened. And then uh, he sold New York Life Insurance, did rather well, and uh, he had the opportunity to buy the Peace and Plenty farm on the corner of 213 and 301. And so that was kind of the beginning of that. And he always loved farming, but that he, he still did insurance and farmed one farm and then he quit doing insurance and we farmed more farms. And right. uh, I was helpful and very, very interested. And um, uh, I had plenty of farm toys to testify to <laughs> my interest in farming, still do. Yeah, so it sounds like to me that your ancestors had a lot of family members, and you mentioned that your grandfather leased the farm and was a tenant farmer, and I think that was a pretty common practice. Yeah, he, um, uh, dad said that as a tenant farmer that it was very common that, you know, maybe every four or five years, maybe a landowner had a grandkid or something that wanted to start farming, so dad's family would and other families just like them would have to leave and find right. another spot. And you know, they walked the cows down the road and all that kind of stuff. So wow. it, was, it was a different world. 
<laughs> so how many cows did your dad milk? Do you remember how many you all were? Were you still milking? Not with, I've never was involved with that. Okay. No. Okay. So, but, yeah. But I've heard all the stories. <laughs> So anyway. Yeah, dairy farming is not an easy life, that's no. for sure. No, it's not. So Beth, um, who were you before you married this uh, fine gentleman? No, uh, uh, Hodel is my last name. Okay. Um, it's kind of funny because we've looked it up, but my family, my mother's side, Dilworth and the Covingtons both landed uh, like in Virginia, the lower shore of Virginia, back about the same time in the 1700s. Oh, no kidding. But my mother's uh, people went to North Carolina and then sub subsequently to Mississippi. So I did not, I was not born in Maryland. I was born in Mississippi and we moved back to Maryland, kind of mom's roots a long, long time ago. So. Right. So right. Anyway. So do you remember moving back to Maryland? Were you born? Uh, I was born in Mississippi, moved here okay. when I was four. Right. And my, uh, we grew up on Ken Island. Um, so, yeah. But my mom and dad um, uh, um, had a house there on Ken Island. But um, I had grandparents that had a farm in Mississippi. Right. So and my that's mother. The Tolson family. Uh, no, no. Um, that's not the. Oh, Hel that was Henry's family. Henry's family yes. had Tolson's. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But um, Ken Island's changed, but I was not a farming family on Ken Island. Right. Yeah. But right. my grandparents in Mississippi had a farm, so right. when we would visit, I had farm things that we did down there. Well, that's fun. Yeah. So how did you get in the Centerville area? Was it through school? Yeah. So Ken Island, you know, Queen Anne's County had one high school, so yes. everybody went to the same high school. But Henry and I did not meet in high school. He's a little bit older than than uh, than I, and he, but he was friends with my older brother. Oh, they're, so that's they're how the it works. Yes. Yes, They're the same age. Yes. They're the same age. So, uh, but we didn't date until we were both in college. Yeah. So you knew of I knew, Henry or you knew of Henry? Or? I knew Earl had a younger sister. So I've told this story a lot. So everybody already knows it, but I'll have to make sure everybody knows it. Oh now. gosh. <laughs> right. Uh, my junior year of college, I, did, I ran out of money. So I went to uh, Chesapeake to take some basic classes that would transfer. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, while I was there, um, a good friend of mine from high school who was on the three or four year Chesapeake program to graduate. Right. Uh, he said, man, you got you got to play baseball with us again. Cause I used to play baseball in high school. And, uh, I was like, I, you know, I haven't played baseball for, you know, and he said, oh man, we'll have a good time. So I played baseball at Chesapeake that good spring you. and I'm glad I did. It was a good time. Well, I'm glad I did for several reasons, but one was, she played softball, so there was this one day, you know, where all, all of the boys and the girls are all kind of congregating before we go out and practice, right? And I said to one of my friends, who's that girl with the red shorts? And he says, oh, that's Earl's little sister. I said, damn. So, so anyway, <laughs> so that was, right? that was the beginning of... Uh, the end. The, no. Uh, no, yeah. no, don't cut that. Don't that, say that. Don't cut that. Don't cut that. So it took a while, but we finally uh, started dating and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's really interesting that he remembers the color of your shorts you had on. Yes. You must have uh, made quite the impression, Beth. <laughs> they worked. I guess so. Yes, that's right. They worked. I guess yeah. so. So what year was that? Do you remember? Uh, 1979. Okay. And we were married in 82. Took you that long? What in the world, well, she Henry? Was, she no. was in college. <laughs> she, she was two years younger. She was going to. Oh, uh, yes. I gotcha. And so I wanted to finish college before I got married. Yeah. So I finished up at University of Maryland. Great. So, yeah. So what did you go to college for, Beth? Uh, dental hygienist. I'm a registered dental hygienist. Retired now. Yes. I worked part-time for 38 years for Dr. Billings and Murphy. Oh, that's wonderful. Down on Kid Island. Yes. Henry, what did you major in? Apl uh, plant science. Oh. I went to University of Delaware. Right. I graduated from University of Delaware. Right. So you all did very well. So when you got married, where did you live when you got married? We rented a farmhouse for a, from a real nice, what? Well, first we lived on uh, Corsica Connect Road. I rented a house before we got married on Corsica Connect. A friend of mine, I lived there. And that was owned by a, um, Mrs. Day. a school teacher mm -hmm. that was named Madeline Day. She was my first grade teacher. And was we we lived. Madeline first. Day was the lady next door. Her sister. Right? It was her sister that was. So I'm trying teacher. to remember my first grade teacher's name. But anyway, 
<laughs> she was my first grade teacher. You did, a few years ago. Yeah. So we had the opportunity, I, my friend and I had the opportunity, I rented it, he moved in, and we were there for a while. And then when we were getting married... Uh, he moved I, out, and then you and I lived there. Yeah, for a little while. And then, but at some point, I worked uh, 10 years at, it was Agrico, and then it was Crop Production Services. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was a really nice old farmer um, that didn't have any kids of his own, but he was he was like a father. His name was Bill Stant. Mm -hmm. I remember. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Bill was in. He farmed and he was had race horses and uh, he was he was we hit it off really well. And he had a farmhouse um, that was. I asked him if the farmhouse anybody living in it, and he said somebody was getting ready to move out, so we rented the farmhouse. And um, so we lived there for a couple years, maybe. At least. And then we started building the house on 213. Yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. It had crickets. You could hear the crickets. They were everywhere. <laughs> and it had, it had uh, water pipes that would spring leaks. And um, what was it? It was flying. Oh, uh, termites in the spring. Termites, oh, yeah. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, termites, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> farmhouse had a lot of personality then. It did, <laughs> yeah. And the, and a lot the, of critters. And the drain pipe, the drain pipe for the bat, the upstairs bathroom um, was <laughs> cast iron, and it went outside the house and down the side of the house. Well, every time you flush, it was really super duper cold. So every time you flushed or you just took a shower or whatever, <laughs> it was building up ice inside. Oh, Until yeah. finally it wouldn't flow, and I called Mr. Bill. I said, Mr. Bill, got a problem. I said, this drain pipe's frozen. He said, oh, I just hook a hose to the hot water heater and stand outside and spray it with hot water. So that's what we did, and it finally, <laughs> finally broke loose. So we had a lot of excitement at the house. So. That was your own form of Drano. Yeah. It made sure everything went. <laughs> but he was, he, was, he was a wonderful man. Yes, yeah, he was good. a very nice man. He yeah, was very good to us. So let's talk about your kids. Mm-hmm. Three kids, correct? Three kids, Will, Ben, and Sarah. Right. Will came along first. Yes. Nice. So tell us about Will. What's Will doing and where is he at? I think this is a very interesting story, only because I know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Will went to uh, here in the county, uh, schools in the public schools in the county, and then he went on a full ride to Washington and Lee University and graduated there, and then he's come back home. And, and is living where? And he lives now at Peace and Plenty Farm, which was Henry's parents' farm. Yes. So he owns that now. He owns that. Which is wonderful. That yes. They, that he's come back and, and he's now re owns your dad's farm. And yes. he's restoring the house, like, perfectly. That's great. So, it'll so be what does Will do? He's a systems engineer. He works for uh, communications and electronics. He designs security systems. systems. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, That's great. And a lot of it's for like big companies across the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and he's the one that figures out what will work together and what won't work together. And, and he's very good at <clears throat> explaining things to people. Mm -hmm. And then we have Ben next. Ben. Ben's in Iowa. Ben's right. in Iowa. He went he, to Iowa State University, so he loves Iowa. And he got his... Uh, master's degree there. Yes. And in, he's ag, in ag engineering. He's an ag engineer. And who does he work for? Iowa State. Which and, is amazing. And he um, he always had green blood, a John Deere kid, and um, he, he had a professor that was a few years older than him. He came from uh, Ohio State. He got his, uh, with his doctorate. And it was kind of the beginning, or not the very beginning, but uh, the, the whole GPS stuff was very active. Right. And of course, all the other Iowa kids went home every weekend where Ben was there. So this professor would uh, get Ben to help him work on projects that he was working with, which meant that they were usually in the field and they were <clears throat> doing something with GPS. He was, he was part of the very beginning of what they actually, I guess, is available now where uh, you can command the grain cart without a driver to come right beside the combine. That's amazing. That's, he, was, he and the professor were the ones that worked on that for a couple falls. That's um, impressive. So anyway, um, but he's worked on so many things that he can't tell us about. Um, <laughs> and he's traveled a lot. Um, anyway, 
anyway, he he's really enjoys what he does, and, he, and he's been very successful at it. That's good. And he, he still works for Iowa State, but he still they do Iowa State custom uh, contracts and custom done does a lot of uh, work for research research for John Deere new products, and they actually Ben and this other friend of his um, Ben's the team leader, but they, they work, they actually farm like 2,500 acres with <clears throat> prototype equipment. That's great. So That's got to be interesting work. Yep. Now we have Sarah, so, youngest and your only girl. My only girl. Yeah. So um, Sarah's had to um, put up with brothers and she, <laughs> she makes them toe the line. But uh, no, she's a uh, biology teacher at Queen Anne's County High School. And she just finished, I think, her ninth year. So she loves teaching. Yes. Yes. She always wanted a younger uh, sibling so she could teach them, and so now she's teaching lots of younger lots, siblings. Yes, that's right. Yes, and she makes quite the impact on the students at Queen Anne's County. Yes. Um, my daughter was uh, lucky enough to have her as one of her teachers, so uh, I, I always heard about Miss Covington, oh. which is wonderful to know that your daughter is making such an impact on Queen Anne's County students. You know, that's that's a really, really positive thing. Um, so let's talk about some of your community service stuff. Henry, you had mentioned that you were on the park board or involved yeah. with the 4-H park. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, I used to be on the park board. <clears throat> I guess when Everybody when I first got out of college, uh, Paul Gunther, their family used to take care of the fruit and vegetables, the open fruit and vegetables outside. Um, <clears throat> and he got me started on that. And um, so I, we did that for like, up until two years ago. Two years ago. Wow. The Godfrey's, they used to do that. They used to do the fruit and veg. They used to, we did the vegetables. They used to do the fruit. And then the Godfrey's got out and. We did farm crops. We did the farm crops. What else? They did fruits and vegetables. Okay. We did farm crops. They did fruit and vegetables. Right. And then when the Godfrey's, after 25 years, they got out, then we, it wasn't that big a deal. So we just did the fruit and veg, the open fruit, vegetables, and farm crops. That's in the pavilion up on the hill. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. So we, that's anybody can submit entries in that. On the open You don't side. have to be yeah. involved with 4-H. You and can I, just have something out of your garden and bring it in and, and put it, it in the open entries. It's yes. kind of funny. Some years there'll, there'll all the, it'd be a lot of stuff. And then some years, if it's a tough summer or something, it won't be as much, but it's a, it is a really good opportunity for uh, people to make a few extra bucks because mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, the winnings are higher than. If I was a kid, I'd be fill, I'd be bringing everything. But anyway, <laughs> I'm right. Not, so. And that's like I said, it's a good opportunity for kids that are not involved sure in 4-H, and they still can bring tomatoes or yeah. a stalk of corn or some soybeans or some hay. It, you know that they grow on their farm, and yeah. and it's it's fun when you see that big blue ribbon hanging on your yeah, box sure. or your products that you're bringing there. Yeah, um, Beth, and you stand you stand side by side with Henry doing those entries. Yes, yes, not yeah. so much in the early years because the kids were small, but right. definitely when everybody was grown and doing their 4-H, you know, projects and stuff like that. Right now, there's something else that I've seen you two very involved in with the church and the chicken barbecues. Yeah, the the church has uh, always been important. I, my great grandfather Henry was a preacher. My grandfather was named Edward. He was like a country preacher. He wasn't an ordained, but Methodist preacher. Right. And then my father did it for a while, and then he decided not to. But anyway, um, uh, I obviously didn't. But we're very we're very uh, we enjoy our church and very involved with our church, Centerville, Meth Centerville Methodist Church. Right. Um, this is, I'll just throw this because I didn't want to forget it, but dad said when he was growing up, um, they worked, they had a large family, nine kids, and there was really only two things, uh, other than go to the church, it was only two things that they really did during the year that right. were okay and didn't cost a lot of money or, well, it wasn't the money, it, uh, it, they, they, they didn't, they were okay with all the church background that one was that um i'm gonna forget oh one was the most important was they they went to the it was okay for their family oh i know it was okay for them every year they went to the 4-h park 
And Dad said back then it was just ropes tied around trees, yes. and, you know, like that. Um, but that was something his father said was okay to do. So they did that every every summer. And the other thing was Dad's uncle, which was my great uncle Alfred, who um, did a lot to help me get going with my A license and stuff like that. He was a, he was a good uncle. Um, he was like. I was 18 and he was 80 and we got along. I used to take him to, he used to own the Y Mills, he started the Y Mills Feed Company. Oh, that's cool. And I used to take him to meetings when he was older, drive him around, stuff right. like that. And um, so anyway, he had an old six wheel truck. So dad's family, other than going to the fair, the other fun thing they did is once a year, they all pollen the back of this uh, <laughs> truck and he'd drive them to Rehoboth. Beach. Really? In a yeah. truck? Yeah, in the back of a truck with, you know, put straw in it and stuff like that. So that, and I confirmed this because this was coming up. I confirmed this with my Aunt Dolly who lived at Star. Right. And I saw, I took her some sweet corn last week and I was say, Aunt Dolly, I'm going to have something to say. And I said, Dad always said that the only, the only two things his father said that were okay besides going to church was to go to the 4-H fair and to go to Rehoboth and Uncle Alfred's truck. And she said, that's exactly right. That's the truth. <laughs> so, I uh, cannot imagine driving all the way to Rehoboth down a bed of straw in the back of the truck. truck. Things you are worked different. on your tan going down there before you yeah, actually got well, there. I guess, <laughs> that's uh, true. Uh, <laughs> things were different. Yeah, right? Yeah, so that's, that's interesting. So I didn't want to forget that. Yeah. Um, Henry, you also, other than farming, also had a business that you ran for many, many years. Tell us what that was. Yeah, the, uh, I was a pioneer sales rep for, well, 10 years I worked at crop production, so at Agrico, then crop production. And then I had the opportunity to sell pioneer seed. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was like 40 years that, uh, that I did that. And well, did. excuse me, let me back up. It was like 10 years I took care of the seed while I was at crop production services and in 30 years I sold the seed on my own. So I was representing Pioneer for 40 years. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And you got was, you got to meet a lot and get to know a lot of people. Farmers, farmers were my best friends, whether they bought something or not. I really enjoyed uh, conversations and meeting people and, you know, sometimes could help them. Sometimes, you know, they had a lot of wise things to tell me. Right. Um, and you recently uh, retired from that business, correct? Two years ago. And what happened to that business? Tell us what you did and chose to do with that business. Well, the, uh, a really good friend of mine named Anton Rowe, he helped me for like five or six years because <clears throat> when, um, when Dad kept stopped helping with the farming, I needed some help anyway. So it was a good time for Anton to help me. So we worked like brothers and um, uh, with the seed and and the farm, my farming, and he still farms too. And uh, so we got along really good and uh, kind of uh, helped set him up so he was in a position to um, uh, take over the, the Pioneer Seed Great. when the opportunity was right. And that's, that's what we did. And it was very smooth. And uh, one of our, I guess the boss at the time told me that it was the easiest transition she ever had. Good. So that's great. So Anton you know, took care of that business. I think he's done really well. He still rents the buildings where my son owns now, where I had my oh, son that's great. there at the corner of 213301. Right. So. Right. Um, tell us about how you all named your farm and what the name of your farm is. Well, we named it Broadland uh, because it's broader than it is wide. I mean, it's wider than it is deep. And what did I say? Okay. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> okay. Got that out. Well, okay. No, we won't try. Oh, well, we named it Broadland because it's wider than it is deep. So, um, and there wasn't a, a name that we had seen anywhere else. So right. We like that. Right. That's very interesting. That's all that Broadland. Tell me a little bit about over the years that you, when you farmed with your dad, mm -hmm. and when you started farming on your own. What's been some of your biggest challenges? What have you seen over the years? Hmm. Equipment. <laughs> well, working with that, I mean, uh, financially, it was always a challenge. And um, it was a team effort. Uh, we used to, Beth was a trooper. We used to help them uh, quite a bit. Um, it was, it, it taught me 
it really taught me dad was always very optimistic next year will be better mm -hmm. which is fine but um you know you still have to be able to pay pay your mortgage and all that stuff right and that's where the stress came and um so uh, i did learn it's good to have a plan a and a plan b and a plan c and that's 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 probably the best thing i learned because mm -hmm. um, we, we um it's you know like any farm family would know it's it's there's times where it's it could be easier yes and it helps if you just stay calm and uh well, to expect the unexpected, that's what I meant by equipment, because all of a sudden everything's going just fine, and then, you know, something blows up, or the sprayer doesn't work, and then, and then you've got to do the next plan, and call somebody else to spray, and right. then you're, you know, behind the eight ball sometimes, just with timing, or, you know, um, weather's always a factor, but everybody... Well, flies. actually, that's, actually... That's always the risk. Actually, this is the only farm we own. Right. Well, we have well, a couple other little things, but this is the only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, when I used to sell seed and I go up to farmers' lanes and they had irrigation, you know, it would it would be so depressing to go anywhere else. You go up their lane, everything's beautiful. Yes. So when we bought this, uh, we had the opportunity that irrigation was the first thing on the list. So that if I had to go out and sell seed to other people and it's ugly and everybody's worried about, you know, how bad it is, I could at least come go, go out my lane and come up my lane and everything looks nice. Yes. And that was, that was, uh, that was money well spent. Still is. This yeah. year too. <laughs> and this year is a challenging year. Yeah. So it's, uh, so anyway, but every, everybody's had ups, downs, problems, uh, but we've had good health. Um, we um, had a lot of blessings. A lot of blessings. We're blessed every day. So that's great. Yep. Beth has a farm life, and you working off the farm. What was your biggest challenge? That's tough. Yes, it was. I had I had a career that I could work part time, mm -hmm. so that was really um, a big plus. Uh, being a dental hygienist, and I live, you know, work pretty close to home, just mm -hmm. down on Ken Island and then back. Great. Um, I guess childcare, you know, was always a factor when the kids were small. Um, but uh, Henry made many a meal when I was working at night. We had a little day, one day that I worked in the evening, so uh, he was a good macaroni and cheese. Put it on the table. I used to make macaroni and cheese and put goldfish on top. Yeah. Oh. That was his specialty. <laughs> you were the winner, winner, chicken dinner right there for right, that. Right, <laughs> right. So I guess, you know, what we always... Um, you have to. You just pull together and you pick up such and such at this, you know, place for some other, you know, ballet lessons or 4-H or something like that. We work right. together to get everybody where they needed to be. Yeah. So. so if there's something that people don't generally know about you as a couple, what would be something that you could think of that you could say, <laughs> well, they don't really know that about us? Is there something or are you just basically a wide open book? Well, if I could think of something, I probably wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, something, you know, unique. I know yeah. something about you that not a lot of people know, and I just mentioned it before we started our interview. What's one of your hobbies that you do, Henry? Oh, oh well, um, Beth and I have an antique tractor collection. Uh, uh, yes, that's being generous. It's Henry's, but he always lets me know when there's something that's yes arriving. available. Right? Yeah. He's yeah. Like it's a really good. And and some of them, we have like twenty, I think, um, but some of them were in great shape and looked pretty when when I got them. Yes. When and sometimes that was the thing we didn't play golf, but we used to go get pick up tractors. That was fun. And it was fun. Do that trips to go get those. <clears throat> so uh, we've been to Indiana. We've been you know Ohio, New, Jersey, New Jersey, Ohio. We've been around picking up tractors. Some of them, probably a third of them, were like didn't have to do anything to them. A third of them I've redone and painted, and the other third are still waiting. Right. Um, but they're all mechanically. There, yeah. Yeah. So uh, now that I don't sell seed, um, that's something I really enjoy. 
Is that your wintertime project? Yeah, it was, except two years ago I got a hip replacement and that screwed that winter up. And <laughs> this year I had a knee replacement and that screwed Holy this. Holy cow! <laughs> so I'm not getting any medical things done just for a couple of years. <laughs> so I, I, wanna, I want to uh, work on the tractors. So we enjoy it. I enjoy it. Um, and uh, I grew up, you know, John Deere was it. So. Most, we said we've got four red ones, so we're not completely, you know. Not completely green. Yeah, but um, they're fun. Yeah, um, that's very interesting. I'm sure it's a lot of work. It's not really work when it's fun. Yeah, I guess if you enjoy it, I can't. Yeah. You can't look at look at it as work. Yeah, it's fun. Um, How about you, Beth? Do you have any little hidden fun things you like to do, or you just hang yeah. out with Henry when he's work or? Uh, Tinkering with the tractors, not working on the tractors. If you don't yeah. think of it, I'll tell her. Um, See if you can think what it was. Well, I love to quilt. Quilt. So that's. She's a really good quilt maker. So I like to do that when I'm not it doing something pay, at church or something. It doesn't pay much. She always gives them away. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I like well, that's, I like that. that is the patience of Job when you can quilt. My mother used to quilt, and I would sit there and say, how do you sit there for hours and stitch and stitch? And she just loved it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was her thing. Didn't have one break there for a lap and in front of the TV and just stitch right. away. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So that's fun. Mine's... So what would you say in your um, years, I'm not going to say many years because you're not that old, mm. um, yeah, okay. Go. with your family and Thank farming you. and being able to buy the property here, what do you consider your biggest accomplishment? Mm, probably our kids. <laughs> yeah, our kids and um, being part of the community. I uh, can't overemphasize uh, over the years, all the farmer customers and, you know, they were like best friends and they were very helpful and they, they, um, uh, you know, they like, you know, when you always like to see younger people, you know, succeed. And so the, uh, the Mr. Ernest Porter, he was really mm -hmm. special. Yes. Um, but I could, uh, I'm not going to name them all, but anyway, they they know who they are and they, um, they've always been good to us. And I think part of it was, um, you know, there's family history there. So like, uh, some of them, you know, knew my grandparents or my grandmother was a Sunday school teacher to there or something. And, you know, um, so, you know, we, people knew who we were. So they, um, they, it's always been, it's always been a good community for us. Mm -hmm. So, so being a part of the community was probably one of the most special things besides our kids, um, and our health in our church um, and being able to have our own place. Yeah. And we try, we try to, we have a barn that we fixed up the, uh, the loft mm -hmm. and um, we've made it available to uh, some reunions and one wedding and not that we want to get in the wedding business, but right. <laughs> um, our youth groups, youth groups at church and uh, and it's kind of funny because when we first bought the farm, it's like, oh, this will be great for all that. It took 10 years before we got to get it done for that reason. So we, we try to share what we have. That's really nice. That's, that's a big part of your community. Mm -hmm. You know, you said that people share with you, and now you're returning that, and, mm -hmm. you know, turning that back around and giving back to the community. Yeah. And I've seen you at a lot of events and a lot of functions. Um, so you do give to your community in a lot of different ways. And obviously you've done it with agriculture too. Mm -hmm. um, you, you bought your farm, you sold seed, you make quilts for people, you know, and you're at the fair every year faithfully, you know, mm -hmm. taking the, the produce and mm -hmm. the farm crops and whatever else anybody has to do. And I think that sets a good example for that next generation and the younger, younger generation, you know, the kids that are in the twenties, they need to think about giving back and putting some time in. You know, the fair is only one week a year, and that's not much to give. You know, so it's we encourage our young people to do that. Well, actually, just for the record, two years ago we did um, pass the torch of the fruit and vegetable to another oh, young I'm man. I'm so disappointed. I don't get to see you. <laughs> 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 we'll still be there. We just won't be we'll collecting be yes, the farm yes. crops. So. Yeah. So you can now you can do the cake testing. 
I guess we could. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you both very much for this and a sincere congratulations on your nomination. And we will see you Wednesday night, the 14th at the main show ring at the fair. Congratulations. Well, thank, thank you, you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yep.